There's so many action cameras out on the market, and if you look around Amazon, you will definitely come across so many different 4K action cameras for as low as 40 bucks and 50 bucks and even 60 bucks. But why don't these get so much recognition? Well, today I would like to compare this cross tour $60 action camera with my GoPro Hero 9 Black. Which one should you get, and why do most people elect to pay so much more for a much more versatile camera overall? Is it really worth it? I mean, let's go ahead and dive right in. Before we continue, I just wanted to remind you that we have a Twitch channel where we stream every Friday and Saturday from 8pm and to 10pm Eastern Time, so why not go ahead and drop a follow? And also don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and also make sure to check out the merch store. There's plenty of black and white sweetness to choose from up there, so go ahead and check that out. And then make sure to take a look at the podcast as well, as a podcast always goes live every Wednesday and Sunday. And with that said, enough rambling, let us get straight into the video. First off, we're going to go ahead and compare the build quality on both of these. Now, both of these cameras are going to be tiny cameras, and they're built very differently for sure. On the crossover camera, you will find a plastic build, and it's going to be a very lightweight camera with some texture around it to make it easier to hold, and I suppose to add a bit of ruggedness to it. But it's really all plastic at the end of the day, and it's incredibly, incredibly lightweight. It almost feels hollow inside. You do still get water resistance through the included waterproof casing that you do have to attach to it, but you can't use any of the ports on it while using this case simultaneously sadly. The GoPro is built much more strongly and this is a heavier camera though there are still both going to be very lightweight. It is larger and it offers a built-in water resistant and a replaceable lens for that matter. You won't find metal on this camera either but most of it is really going to be comprised of the soft touch yet sturdy material that makes the GoPro feel pretty strong and it is actually pretty strong. It is meant to be dropped, it is meant to be thrown. Not that you should but it can handle these things minus the screen of course. Both of these cameras are going to be pretty small with the GoPro being just a little bit bigger but both are really going to be pretty pocketable in my opinion. You can stick them in your pockets very 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 easily. No issues there. And the cross tour has a non-touch display where you navigate the menus using the buttons on this unit. And this display is also made of plastic though it is still going to be fairly decent for what it is. The colors are definitely more washed out when you look at the contents through it and the menus offer a bit of a learning curve to actually get a hang of since it's got a weird combination based not navigation system I guess it's a little bit hard to describe yeah, but basically you just have to remember how to use the buttons in order to navigate it and here you're going to find a 2.5 millimeter microphone jack and mind you included you do actually get a lavalier microphone in the box with this camera a micro HDMI port a micro USB port for charging a battery compartment as well and a micro SD card slot. Now, the GoPro is mostly going to be operated through the touchscreen, though this one in particular has two screens so you can monitor what the camera is doing both from the front and from the back of this camera. And this camera is meant to be navigated through the back though for the most part and it mostly works over gestures but there are also going to be voice controls or if you're into that sort of thing. And you also get very few physical components in comparison to the crosser at the very least regarding navigation and, and usability but only pretty much just a record and a power button that is going to double as just another navigation tool in general here you will also get a micro sd card slot a battery compartment and a usb-c port and that's pretty much it now, this display is pretty fantastic by the way and very colorful it's much better for monitoring visuals in comparison for sure and the same goes for the front facing screen on the gopro 2 so yeah, like the screens are just going to be way better here. Now the GoPro will have a bigger battery and a better energy management software overall. So like in terms of battery life, the GoPro is much, much better. I would say the cross tour has a battery life of less than one hour since the battery dies off very shortly, maybe around 30 minutes, especially if you're recording all throughout. And now the GoPro offers about one hour to an hour and a half, though it can be less and just depending on whether or not you're recording the entire time, what resolution you're recording at, what settings you're using, and that kind of thing, it is still going to vary, but roughly that is what I've gotten on average. 
Either way, you do have to be pretty conservative with the battery usage on each one, and extra batteries is always recommended no matter which route you end up going. Now let's get into the video comparisons. The GoPro Hero 9 Black can record in 5K, but we won't be considering its performance in 5K since the crossover maxes out at 4K. The crossover is not bad for the price, it's actually pretty good in fact, and the colors are very washed out, that's going to be for sure, but you still get a wide angle view which a lot of people do love and the footage is pretty sharp, it's actually sharp enough for the money I would say. When it comes to the actual picture quality, it's pretty good for what it is and I really can't complain too much about that, though sometimes this camera does get overwhelmed by light if it's too bright outside for example, if it's just a really sunny day, you're going to get a lot of glare on this camera for sure, but that's really my only critique and it's really the most that I can critique it on, in my opinion. As for the Hero 9, you've actually got much sharper footage and much more colorful footage nonetheless. There's also a flat mode if you do want a more customizable color profile, but it's definitely not as dry as a cross door is going to be. But do remember that with the crosser, you can still do color work and post, but if you didn't want to, then the colors are, going, are not going to look that great. It's very sharp, there's going to be great stabilization, and it's just very beautiful to look at overall. However, I would say that the visuals are exactly what I would expect out of a $400 camera and exceptional for a $60 camera, so do consider that. And the same is really going to go when it comes to filming in 1080p. Essentially, it's still going to be pretty sharp on both fronts for sure in case you're interested. Maybe you're not so interested in the 4K aspect, but you just want to see how they perform in 1080p. They're both pretty much what you would expect them to be, with the GoPro obviously looking a lot better. And in spite of the price of the cross tour, it does come with a bunch of accessories. Things like mounts and belt clips, a waterproof case, a charging cable, some straps for your wrist, and so much more bundled with this camera. Now the GoPro just includes the battery, and this time it actually comes with a carrying case, which is the first time that I've ever heard of a GoPro ever actually coming with a carrying case and some mounts, but that's pretty much it and it is lacking in some accessories so I have found myself having to buy more accessories for the GoPro when I feel like the cross store came with everything I would need and way 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 more some trash even so that's really why people spend so much more money on these GoPros they look so much better than the cheap cameras that you will find on Amazon and are built to last a lot longer you also get software updates and support for a long time when with these cheaper cameras you really don't but you still do get manufacturer warranties at least if it were up to me though i would definitely go with a gopro as i already have i did use this this little guy the cross store for a little bit for some minor projects but i ended up having to go for a gopro eventually because the quality of my content just ended up going up and i needed to make sure that it stayed consistent across all formats but something like the crossword can be obtained by ju just about anybody it's very affordable and offers a lot for the money and if you just want an action camera to use for a little while and you found the footage appealing enough then this camera is really for you and i'm sure that you will find a lot of value out of it as i did back when i first got it but if it's not enough for you then you will find yourself looking at much pricier options the point of this video isn't to sell you on more expensive cameras or gear of any kind but really to show you what you get out of each and depending on what your budget is if you do want to spend 60 bucks on a camera, this is what you're going to get. But if you want to spend 400 on the camera, this is what you can get out of it. And that's essentially the entire point. I just want to show you what they each offer within each respective category, because obviously one's going to be better than the other in terms of quality. But what matters is which one you can get and which one you can get the most use out of in the long run. With that said, if you're interested in purchasing either one of these, then I'll be making sure to leave affiliate links down to Amazon in the description as well as Luster. So if you end up using any of my links, I do get a small commission that does help me run things just a little bit more smoothly around here. But if you end up using Luster, then it's actually going to be a tool that is going to help you find a bunch of different sales or just like the best prices on a lot of these products. So it is something that I do recommend that you install 
install it is a non-intrusive browser extension so just go ahead download it don't worry about it it is free and it offers a ton of value so links to that are going to be below and also don't forget to stop by the tech summit podcast which does take place every wednesday and every sunday where we tend to have some hot takes i think that it is a spot like just to come by for some tech news also i do stream on twitch every friday and saturday from 8 p.m to 10 p.m again everything is going to be linked down in the description as well as my instagram and my twitter if you would like to follow along this has been francisco from tech summit thank you so much for watching and i will be seeing you all later enjoy